What if humanity built a Dyson Sphere? Not in the science fiction novel, not in 10,000 years. Let's say, within the next few centuries, we somehow manage it. A megastructure so vast, it surrounds our entire sun, harvesting its full energy output. Could we do it? And more importantly, what would it mean? Let's break it down. First, what is a Dyson Sphere, really? Despite popular depictions in games and shows, physicist Freeman Dyson never imagined a solid sphere. He proposed a swarm, a vast cloud of satellites orbiting the sun, collecting solar energy. Why? Because our energy needs grow. And if you want to power a truly advanced civilization, like a Type 2 on the Kardashev scale, you need to go big, really big. That means capturing the total energy output of your star. And the sun outputs a lot, roughly 3.8 times 10 to the 26th power watts. For comparison, all of human civilization currently uses about 2 times 10 to the 13th watts, a mere fraction. A Dyson Swarm could give us 10 billion times more power than we currently use. Okay, so how would we build it? First problem, materials. A Dyson Swarm isn't one giant shell. It's made of millions, maybe billions, of solar collecting satellites, each in orbit. But that still requires absurd amounts of raw material. We'd need to mine entire planets, moons, or asteroids. Mercury, for instance, is a top candidate. It's close to the sun, full of metals, and lacks an atmosphere, making launches easier. We'd use self-replicating robotic factories to mine it, process it, and build satellites, each equipped with solar panels, reflectors, or beam transmitters. Once launched into orbit, these units would form a loose, shifting shell, not physically connected, but carefully coordinated to avoid collisions. Second problem, energy transmission. Great, you've collected all this solar power. Now what? You need to get it back to Earth or wherever your civilization lives. Options include laser beams, highly focused but risky, miss and you vaporize the wrong thing. Next one is microwave transmission, safer, more diffuse, but harder to aim precisely. Both would require receivers the size of cities, called rectennas, to capture the energy and convert it into usable electricity. And this system would need to be incredibly stable, or a power outage could mean, well, fried planet. Third problem, orbital mechanics. Keeping billions of objects in orbit around the sun without crashing into each other? Not easy. Each satellite in the Dyson Swarm needs a unique orbit, constant correction via propulsion or electromagnetic tethers, and algorithms to avoid collisions and shadowing. It's like trying to choreograph the world's most complex space ballet, with no conductor. And if one satellite fails and collides, you risk a cascade, a chain reaction of destruction that could wipe out large sections of the swarm. Space traffic control would need to be an entire industry. But let's say we pull it off. The Dyson Swarm is complete, stable, beaming power back home. What happens? First, we've basically hit God mode on energy. There's no shortage of electricity. We could power trillions of AI systems, simulate entire virtual universes, terraform planets, and launch interstellar ships without worrying about fuel. This much power would unlock nearly any technological dream, curing aging, manipulating matter at the atomic level, or sustaining a population of hundreds of billions. Now, what about the sun? Would covering it hurt it? Not really. The satellites would orbit far enough out, typically 0.5 to 1 astronomical unit, that the sun's internal processes remain unaffected. But to outsiders looking in, the sun would start to dim. A full Dyson swarm might block or scatter most visible light, making our sun nearly invisible to outside observers. In fact, one way scientists search for alien civilizations is by looking for infrared signatures, stars that are dim in visible light, but glowing in heat. A Dyson swarm would glow in infrared as it radiates waste heat. So if aliens exist and have Dyson tech, that might be how we spot them. And if we ever build one, it would be a galactic beacon saying, hey, we did it. 
We've become a type 2 civilization. But there's a catch. With godlike power comes godlike responsibility. A malfunctioning beam, rogue AI, or cosmic accident could turn this megastructure into a planetary death ray. And if a Dyson swarm fell into the wrong hands, or wrong algorithms, it could end us faster than a gamma ray burst. So yeah, build a Dyson swarm, sure, but maybe install an off switch, just in case.